All right. I think we are almost live. What is up, everybody? Happy Tuesday, and thank you for tuning in today to Ricardo Sturdivant's Reinventing Drawing Group, full of Tuesday feels. All right, as I'm getting my stuff started. So thank you, everybody, for tuning in today. Um, we're excited to have you here. Um, just to get started, we want to welcome you to all of those who are listening to the podcast on Facebook, YouTube. We'd like to know where you're tuning in from. So drop us a comment in the chat and I'll be sure to either shout you out or tell Ricardo that you're here. If you guys would like to join in on this Zoom, all you have to do is go to our Google Calendar, which is on our website at reinventingthetattoo.com. If you scroll down just a little bit to the uh, calendar that you see, if you click the date today, you'll be able to find the link to jump on in. And we encourage you to do that. It's a lot of fun. Um, just one second before we get started, I will uh, just get one thing updated and keep. All right. Okay, so you guys can join us here every Tuesday to see Ricardo Sturdivant and other community members talk about art collecting clients, uh, fitness, tech, and more. We're beaming out to several different places. So like I said, if you're watching, just let us know that these streams are working, either tagging a friend who loves tattoos or just letting us know where you're beaming in from. And it's fun to see who's all beaming in from around the world. Of course, positive reviews are always welcome. All of these reinventing network shows, art jams, drawing groups, interviews, panels, and webinars can be watched anytime at reinventing247.com. While you're there, hook yourself up with a sample bundle from top tier brands known for making quality products, such as Cheyenne Cartridges, Raw Pigments, and d -Lies Pro. So aside from today, we have several weekly shows and drawing groups that you are welcome to tune into or even hop on the call with us. It's really easy and it's actually really fun to do. You can set reminders for our upcoming events on our YouTube channel or catch us live. On Sundays at 1 p.m. Eastern, we have the Reinventing Drawing Group with Jason Leeser. This is seriously a great show to bring something you're working on, or if you have questions about something, you can get a straightforward, honest feedback in a judgment-free atmosphere. Monday evenings at 9 p.m. Eastern, we have our evening canon class with subscribers that is led by the legendary Guy Aitchison. You're asking what is a subscriber? Head over to courses.reinventingthetattoo.com to find out more. To subscribe to the canon that we're talking about at courses.reinventingthetattoo.com, you'll be able to have access to our Monday evening classes and all of our new content that is newly migrated to a really easy and fun to use platform. Every Tuesday at 10 a.m. we have our Tuesday Feels with Ricardo. Wednesdays at noon is a Tattoo Now show led by Gabe Ripley. Thursdays at noon is a Tattoo Collecting podcast. And Thursdays at 10 a.m. the subscribers are encouraged to join Kier for Apprentice Fundamentals. Also, we have other pro development courses at courses.reinventingthetattoo.com with content from Andre Malcolm, DJ Betts, and tons more to check out. Uh, we want to say thank you to our sponsors today. We've got Alex at World Tattoo Events, providing the largest, most comprehensive resource for tattoo events in the world. Thank you to Raw Pigments at rawpigments.co. They're an e-company that is tapping into the source with acrylic-free pigments that have been impressing artists across the globe. Also, Technology for Tattooers, which is Tattoo Now. Thank you to them. And the founder and inspiration behind Reinventing the Tattoo, Guy Aitchison. You can find his biomech encyclopedia, DVDs, machines, paintings, and more, all at his website, GuyAitchison.com. Of course, also thank you to Jake at the Fireside Tattoo Network, Amy at the Apprenticeship Diaries, and Eco-Friendly Tattoo Supplies.com. Throughout the show, we welcome those positive comments and reviews. So it's a lot of fun for you guys to interact with us. We do watch the chat. <clears throat> like I said, to join in this live stream, just follow the event at reinventingthedact2.com. Click it, check your video and audio, and you're in. If you guys would like uh, to host a reinventing event or sponsor our community, just send us an email at management at reinventingthedact2.com. Now, I'll be off in the background. I'll pop in occasionally to talk with Ricardo. I'll be reading off comments. Um, if you guys have any references or inspirations that you'd like me to share, just let me know. All right, let's go ahead and uh, bring you in, Ricardo. How's it going? Another Tuesday Pepper feels. Freak. Yeah, Tuesday's feelings, man. Do you know what I mean? You gotta keep yeah, going. Exactly. Last week, I was all up in my feelings. I almost shed a tear at the beauty of what <laughs> Jason was telling us. I, honestly, I, I love listening to you guys talk, and we take it in all sorts of uh, positive, reflective directions, I would say. 
Yeah, Jason's got some pretty insightful things to add to a lot of conversation that, that him and I have uh, quite often. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> he's pretty insightful, dude. So it's it's pretty cool to, uh, to chit chat with him. You know what I mean? And like, I, I really like it whenever he questions me too. You know what I mean? Like, I'll make a statement or or I have some kind of hypothesis or theory or something like that, and he'll he'll question it. You know what I mean? So it makes me kind of delve deeper into it. And, and it's in in a sense, it's kind of like what this whole environment's like all about, you know what I mean? Like us having the right questions at the right time, or, or even if it's not the right question, just, you know, spin it out there and just having that, that dialect, that conversation and stuff like that, you know, like you're saying that positive environment's pretty cool. Yeah. And um, last week you finished up working on that charcoal school that you had been working on for quite a bit. I did. Yeah, I did. Yeah. It was fun. Um, I'm going to be um, spraying some um, fixative on it. Some permanent okay. fixative. Uh, uh, actually, you know what I think I might do though. Then this is, this might be pushing it a little bit. And I know I've, Jason, speaking of Jason, I've I've done this before. I've I've sprayed a workable fixative over a charcoal, and then I've gone back in with like white acrylic and just added some like highlights and stuff like that to it. Which I think I might do with this piece and just kind of like scumble it in there a little bit to soften it up some some of those edges up. Um, scumble. Yeah, scumble. Yeah, yeah. I I learned that term. I think I heard that term whenever I was working with um, Joseph Javorovich. He's a, an oil painter. If you can pull him up real quick, his stuff is amazing. Um, but he talked a lot about that. And it's, it's actually like a really effective way whenever you're working with um, portraits in oil paintings to kind of achieve that, that ambient occlusion kind of, kind of feel like the way that light affects the environment, you know? <clears throat> Ginger ale. Ginger ale. Uh, yeah, it. if you can text me how to spell his name, I think I could pull oh, okay. it up would be a little. Two, but yeah, the like, other thing. Oh, go. Sure, it's, the other thing I was going to say is that you've got a brand new painting that I have not seen yet. And you mentioned yeah. that you were kind of working on this with Renee Little's paint jam last night. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I missed last month's um, uh, paint jam. I, I think she does it at the, at the end of every month and stuff like that, which is awesome. Um, I jumped in and she had her apprentice working with her at first and Gabe was on there. Everybody was talking about like, you know, what, what they've learned out of the tattoo culture, uh, the way they've experienced it, some of the things that you might encounter and stuff like that. It was all around a really good conversation, like a wealth of knowledge as far as our industry goes, you know, from an experienced person like her. She's a great person. If you guys haven't met her in person, she's, she's so funny and down to earth, you know what I mean? But at the same time, very abstract. And I, I really dig that kind of a vibe. You know what I mean? Um, it takes a, a lot of us to be on a somewhat of a different wavelength in order for us to like, you know, progress and stuff like that, you know what I mean? So it's fun to be around her, but yeah, I started this painting last night. Um, I'm working on this like Mardi Gras mask kind of thing. Uh, and I'm, I did use a Google, a Google photo reference and stuff like that, but I'm kind of manipulating the colors and stuff like that on it and uh, make it my own thing. Can you um, share some of the technical information about like um, what you're using and stuff like that? Yeah. No problem. Um, right now, all I'm using is just like some some basics acrylics. I have some basics, and I have some um, like just generic kind of master's touch stuff that you can get at like you know any any art box kind of store. You know. Sure. Um, it, it, I, they vary in size. I have a bunch of stuff. Like honestly, like I had this um, when I when I want to paint real fast, I use acrylics. And the reason for that being is that like, it's a very solid foundational um, paint that you can use it. Sometimes if you really want to mess with one area, you can really finesse it with either like water or a glazing kind of medium to, um, to kind of finesse all this smoothness of rough, like brush strokes out. I love the brush strokes. I love them. I think it gives life and character to the image. Um, and all I've been doing lately is just kind of like doing an underpainting really. I'm just going in and mat I'm mapping out all my dark areas, the way the light is going to hit it, where my light source is going to be from darker to lighter. Um, I used a very large rough bristled brush at first. I think this one is what, like an inch, inch wide. Um, and I used a four inch brush to paint the brown over the whole thing first. Sometimes I'll go in and primer it, but this time I wanted to have those earthy tones in the background for all these like cooler kind of uh, tones that are going to be sitting on top of it. So if that makes any sense at all, that's kind of what we're doing. But I like to focus 
I've always talked about this since the very beginning. So when I first got on here is just the general shapes. You know what I mean? Like you can see how chunky, pull it up a little bit closer. You can see how chunky those shapes are. You know, that's very rudimentary. Um, I've been messing with the mouth. I didn't like where the mouth was sitting last night. So it's like blurred it out. And I'll mess with that placement and angle of it and everything like that too. Everything is super chunky and super unfinished, unrefined. I almost like paintings like this because the further away you get from them, the smoother it'll start to appear. You know, but there's so much character in these brush strokes and stuff like that. Like it's almost like the paintbrush is guiding you and you can tell the direction of the movement of the light and stuff like that, or the, the plane of that area of the uh, shape. There's a lot of different like angles. Like if you break down these curves to simple faces, there's some very simple planes here that are having an effect by this light in that. Um, so what we're gonna do is kind of start rolling this, this shape up a little bit more for the back of that forehead area. And we want the highlight to be on the cheek on right underneath this eye socket. So that's gonna affect a lot of this stuff here and the, the like lacy kind of decoration that's around the eyes here. It's all kind of like a calavera skull, like a day of the dead skull where it has a lot of decoration on the eye, the eye sockets and stuff like that. So there's a lot of frills and like little, little details that we'll put in there with a smaller brush. But I like to work with the big brush as long as I can uh, to keep it real loose like this. Um, so we're just gonna kind of like jump into some of that. And later on, I'll be talking a little bit about some of the ideas that I had this past week, uh, especially with everything that we've been talking about recently, uh, with it being like the new year and everything like that. You know what I mean? I think it's always important to kind of check back in with yourself. And sometimes that means realizing that you might not feel like you're making any progress on your goals. But the fact is, is that you make progress every day especially just given the fact that you're even thinking about it and that you're even questioning the fact if you are or not, right? One of those things, I mean, you know, we, we kind of take things for granted sometimes. And I was thinking about it, like how many times have you opened up your fridge and you're like, man, I have all this food, but I don't even know what I want to eat. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's pretty crazy when you think about it like that in the sense that we're pretty fortunate if that's really the case, you know what I mean? There's a lot of things that people take for granted. Um, eating, <laughs> having so much food in your, in your refrigerator at your touch, at your reach, that you can just like realize you're bored. Am I just bored? Am I just eating because I'm bored? But um, no, you know, like I think it's the same with, with our art and our progress too. I think that there's a lot of times that we take those simple things for granted. Uh, and it's important to check back in from time to time and realize exactly where you're at. Uh, let's see here, let's go ahead and work on some more of these cool, cool tones. So I'm gonna actually go ahead and grab some blue. Sorry, I have like a toolbox full of these old, like, all these old acrylics. I'm gonna grab some real quick. Maneuver around with all the cameras. And that's going to be okay. There's a light blue, and we'll mix in some browns with it. Try to get some lavender out of it, see what we can do. Browns and reds. I think I have very little white left. Let's see if we can adventure. See what we can do with some of the yellows, some of the light tones, lighter skin tones that we can have, like some light yellow ochres and such. And they can make those values. All right, let's see what we can do. Oh yeah, I got a little bit of white left too. But 
like I said last night, we were hanging out with Renee Little. It was a pretty good time. We talked a lot about um, the tattoo industry, our experiences with the tattoo industry. She has quite interesting stories about the industry. Uh, if you get a chance, message her, talk to her when she's here. Good stuff. And it's always different for everybody. We all have a different experience with it. But that's what makes it interesting. I will say, though, Ricardo, even in my experience, like, for example, today that I found out just how small the industry really is or was just reminded. Um, I'm working with a guy in Canada and he's like, hey, I had someone order from California. I was wondering if you could send send the, her bottle. It was just one bottle to her. He's like, yeah, sure. Who is it? It happens to be Nina Richards, who is someone that I like. I don't know if she's my friend, but, you know, what are the odds that someone all the way in Ontario would be asking for someone that that we know and um ricardo if you're not familiar with her i think you'd really mm -hmm. enjoy her work her style her enthusiasm um that's killer nina richards um she's only been tattooing for about three years but seriously doing such a fantastic job really straight head on her soldiers shoulders because she's gonna make me want to quit whenever i look at her work like ah, Here, I'll three years man <laughs> yeah let's check it out yeah I'll, I'll check it out but super great personality. I met her honestly just through Instagram, and we started talking about uh, kind of specifics with the ink. Mm -hmm. She really kind of uh, impressed me with what she's working on and her goals. It's killer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we talked. They talked a little bit about that last night. Like I said, she had her apprentice with her, Melissa. I think her name is. Okay. Uh, and I can't remember. I can't. I'm sorry if I butchered her name or didn't even say the right name, but like, ugh. Oh my okay, gosh. So Yep, she hasn't. This is a piece that she I really liked from her that had a lot of, I don't know. I just I thought that you would like it in particular because some of the colors yeah. and the way that the skull sits on that um, on her arm. Yeah, I love that. It's like very painterly. You know what I mean? And those yep. muted tones underneath those like really warms are cool as hell. A lot of the roses are great. The black yep. are great. Awesome. Yeah, look how smooth that is. It's like butter. What I Man. like about her work and your work too is that you can actually uh see beyond the ink and actually see a little bit of the person who applied the tattoo you know oh, thank you yeah that's awesome man look at that wow i sorry to interrupt from your painting i just i just happened no. to be checking my emails and thought wow what a small 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 world that's so cool yeah look at that that's great Man, how long has she been tattooing? Three years? Uh, a little over three years. So she went to school for art. Obviously, she got her degree and stuff like that. But um, she's also been kind of, she talked to me in an interview that I did with her about trying to do her own designs. And at what point is she ready to do that? Or like her clientele ready to do that, considering her experience. So stuff yeah. like this seems like up your alley, Ricardo, with skull placement and um, just being creative with the tattoo design itself. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, she's thank you for comparing me to this because she's awesome. Yep, she's fantastic, man. Look at that. Yeah, it'd be cool to get her on here sometime, you know what I mean? And like talk to her. Like, yeah, it's like, just I think the time zone differential is the stuff that maybe we can do a uh, a nightly edition of the Tuesday feelings one day. One I would love that. I think that'd be great. That'd yeah, be and rope in some of the guys. I know Josh Moon has talked about um, wanting to jump on and stuff like that, but that California time zone, it's it's only seven o'clock in the morning out there. It's killer. That's kind of like, hey, it's I've been up, I've been up for a while. You go ahead and wake up too. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, man, that'd be cool to have her on, and it'd be fun to have to to meet Josh and stuff like that too. Yeah. Um. Do you think that you could pull up your camera just a little bit? I see half your head in front of the painting okay. on that one. Yeah. No problem. Let's see. Sure. But it's cool to see um what you're doing and kind of uh see it come to life. Do you happen to have like? Are you going to just go balls to the wall on this piece and um, try and finish it? Or are you going to take your sweet time? Well, I'm going to try to finish it. I'm trying to map out all the tonal values right now. Like I'm trying to get all those like hues and stuff in the right place and everything. Um, okay. And, but yeah, I think finishing it though will be, that's going to be um, like suggestive. You know what I mean? That's going to be opinionated as far as like the way the, the viewer wants to see it but like for, or for me i mean I, I want it to be a little bit more refined in certain areas like i'm going to really pay attention and get a lot of detail into the mask area okay a bit. but then the rest of the background and stuff like that will be kind of um looser so yeah. that'll stay that'll stay kind of chunky i might blend a little bit here and there but yeah i'm definitely gonna get 
the majority of it, the tonal value is blocked into. Is that better? Yep. Actually, it's much, much better. Now we can see the whole painting. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you very much for the observation. For that observation. Yeah, sometimes I just, uh, I've noticed through um, different people that I've worked with to just speak up when it's a little things. I'll just say Gabe has taught me that quite a bit, rather to just say it right away, so get it taken care of. Yep, exactly. Knock it out of the way. Let's move on, right? Be very candid about it. Speak with perfect candor. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Hey, Copernicus. Yeah. Um, but this was a lot of fun doing this last night. I got, I got a majority of this. But well, I got the whole thing started last night. So that was a lot of fun. And uh, you get kind of distracted sometimes with everybody talking and joking and stuff like that too. But, you know, oh, right? uh, Jason has arrived. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring him in. Jason's here. Who's at the door? <laughs> hey, Jason. Wow, looking fresh and clean. So fresh and so clean, clean. Look at yeah, you, exactly. man. Look at you. Told you guys a shower doesn't happen very often, but I do do it. That's pretty awesome. That's good. That's good for your clients. That's good for everybody else around you, right? Yeah, I found that when you come in and you're reeking of like day old beer, <clears throat> clients don't really like that. <laughs> yeah. They're like, I think you smell like a brewery. That That's funny. I was so just thinking in story. my head about... Oh, what go ahead. Ricardo just said, I actually had a professor say that straight to my face yeah, when I was yeah. in college. Oh. Oh. He's like, dude, you, you, you smell and you reek like a brewery. That's awesome. Dude. He's like, do me a favor, go home, shower, and send me an email and I'll catch you up. But I can't have you in class like this. <laughs> oh, man. It's like, well, uh, I don't know if that's good or bad or what, but it's something. I was thinking about last night, one of the artists that I remember something very particular about him, maybe six or seven years ago, he was tattooing and he was gagging the whole time. He's like, man, this girl just smells so bad. And it was, it was, I mean, I guess when you're in that situation getting tattooed, it's a, your body just stresses. And I know that, you know, some people they, <laughs> that involves sweating and stuff like that. So do you guys ever have that? Obviously you have it with your clients, but how do you bring that up or do you just ignore it? Well, you know what? Sometimes a little bit of uh, chapstick underneath your nose goes a long way. <laughs> okay. It keeps, your, it keeps your, you know, it keeps your nose, your nose kind of moist and stuff like that in the winter time, especially. And then, you know, it serves double purposes and stuff. Okay. So, I don't know. I, I haven't had too many people that, that smell that bad. Like I'll honestly, sit doubles like, as mustache wax. There you go, man. I've had too many people smell that bad, but I've had some people where it's like kind of uncomfortable. Like you can smell like a, you know, a little bit of BO or something like that. And you just ask them if they want some underarm deodorant or something like that. You want some of the spray deodorant I got? I don't know. I, uh, to be completely and totally honest, my secret to dealing with that, smoke yeah. about a pack of cigarettes a day for 10 years. <laughs> You'll lose your sense of smell completely, and then nothing really matters. Oh, man. That sounds like it's not very good info. Because I mean, if you're smoking that, that much... That's, dude, that's how I have dealt with that. Like, I haven't had a sense of smell in about 10 years because I used to smoke all the time. Yeah. So I, I can't really comment on it. I guess you don't really smoke that often, do you? You smoke a little bit from the time to time. That I've May, I might have one a day or one every other day just yeah. kind of socially now but yeah. i don't i don't really smoke like i used to i mean i right. used to go i used to smoke a lot i had it down to like a routine i would have one when when i went into the studio and then i would have one before i got started my first appointment then i would have one about two or three hours later as like a little mid turn mid session break and then I would have another one once I wrapped up that one. And then it would probably be about a half hour. And then I would go outside and I would have another one, you know, before my next client would come in. And then <laughs> I would have another one at a mid-session break. This is you know, adding up to a whole lot of other ones. That, that is really accurate to what I see a lot of artists doing. That is a super accurate timeline. Yeah. 
Yep. Yeah. And I'll be honest, from a client's perspective, and I see it all the time, like you guys are the ones that that kind of stink. Like if they're not a smoker, <laughs> I, yep. I don't mean that against exactly. you, Jason. I just mean that like uh, if, for a non-smoking client, that smell is pretty irritating. Yeah. Yeah, big time, especially in the winter. Oof. And that's part of the reason why I've I've like really, really cut down. And I mean, it's like I said, it's more of a social thing now. It's not like, you know, I'm, I wake up first thing in the morning and I crave a cigarette. You know, I don't, um, I, I don't even, there are days when I go to the studio and I don't have any. That's awesome. So it's, it really is more of like a circumstantial kind of social thing. Uh, but I know if I've got a full day coming in, I'm not smoking. I'm not going to have the time. Yeah, you're just going to go back to back tattoos, right? I'm, I'll be lucky if I have time to go to the bathroom if I have the food. Yeah. Oof. I hate some of those days, sometimes that can be really taxing, dude. Oh, yeah. That's okay and, uh, because, I mean, I might not smoke a whole lot of cigarettes anymore, but ever since I switched to crack, that's not <laughs> a, the tea really hasn't been an issue. Oh, my God. <laughs> They say nicotine's harder to quit, so I just thought I'd give it a try. Yeah, I figure if I can quit nicotine, I can quit crack. Yeah, exactly. I'm just kidding. Don't do drugs. Don't do drugs. Which brings me to my next comment. Drugs are really, drugs are really bad. expensive, and you can't afford them. Yeah, no, it's not good. No, yeah, do art, not drugs. Sounds about right. Hugs, not drugs. Yeah, honestly, I think that art is a, a strange type of drug because it does take you away and it removes you from your current situation that you're in. Um, you know, Heck yeah. if there Heck are better yeah. art programs available for kids in school, maybe that would make some sort of impact. Oh man, don't even get me started on all that stuff. I think we should start like <laughs> tattoo programs in school. Okay. I'm just How joking, so? by the way. I mean, there's there's a, a lot of kids. I just, I was just thinking out loud. Yeah. Like elementary school kids, we'll sit them down, start teaching them about, you know, needle tapers and like, <laughs> you know, bug pin mag configurations and whatnot. Sure. You know, we'll, we'll have them starting to mix their own pigments by the time they're not. That'd be awesome. Talk about apprentices. Uh, actually, Lauren, are you going to be in Ohio in a couple weeks? Yeah, I remember I've counting down the days to see you. Good. I see you have not been counting down the days. No, I just get really distracted. <laughs> no, it's cool. I yeah, I'll be there. Sure, because I'm gathering materials for you to take home. Ooh, okay. Yep, I will be there. I'm going to get there. I'm going to leave uh, Appleton maybe around like four or five, and then I'll get there like overnight on Saturday. Okay, so you're not coming in until Saturday? I mean, I, it's up in the air. I've got my hotel Friday night, so we'll see. I just uh, was thinking I would leave after my daughter got home from school right on yeah i'm uh, i'm leaving friday morning and i'm going to be driving up there all day friday okay um hopefully i get there in enough time that i can link up with gabe and um you know we can get everything set up before saturday because i'm busy all day saturday uh sure maybe i can come earlier in that case uh i was just showing ricardo my uh little mobile cart i'll have to show it to you a little bit i don't know I could give you a peek real quick if you'd like. The thing is awesome, dude. Is it? Oh my gosh. It's like out of seat. It's brilliant. Does it have like articulated arms? Is it like fully robotic? No, it's not that cool at all. Does it it's have actually a cool skull? enough. It needs to have a skull. Does it skull? have a skull? A skull. It's not cool unless it has a skull. It doesn't really necessarily have one yet. But if you look, I've got a webcam that can move around. So? Um, I've got a, a, a controllable little mount for my phone that I can control with a remote mount here. I've got my external monitor here to see what's going on. And then I've got a DSLR stabilizer here on the top row. I've got a microphone. I've got a stream deck. I've got a laptop for streaming. And then on the bottom, I've got my lights. So um, they can all come off of here. So that way I can move to a new spot and I don't need a table, I've got it. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Just that alone is like worth it. It's way Yeah, cool. it's all collapsable as well. So it could easily, easily move around. 
That's awesome. Yeah. So thought you would like that. Bravo. Thank you. Yes. Bravo for sure. So I thought that would be practical to use at like the Philadelphia convention or uh, I'll give it a run in Ohio and see how it goes. But so I know if that you're, if you're bringing that, if you're rolling that up and down the aisles, does it have to be plugged in or is it all mobile? Mobile. I've got a, uh, a couple little battery packs. For example, I've got one that can charge my laptop up to twice. And then I've got um, a couple different battery packs that are Velcroed to that bottom. So you wouldn't really even see it. It doesn't look tacky. So Man, what I'm thinking dude. is you'll, based on the volume of people, if you plan on like moving that thing up and down the aisles, that would be, show that would Saturday, probably, I'm going to enlist limited my friend Philly. Pat to be your like, basically your blocker. And he's just yeah. going to start moving people out of your way as you're going down. I think that's, um, but we did, we have some pretty cool artists that are coming. Um, are you familiar with the, his, he goes by the Tony V. He's going to be our color artist. And then George Lang will be our black and gray artist. So hopefully I'll get that 20 foot, um, maybe more with your guys' booth space to kind of like move around from spot to spot. George is going to be there. Yeah. He's going to be there with us. And then Tony, I'll show you some of his work real quick. You might like it. As I'm, Tony Rommel's going to be there again. Oh, I don't know. He usually is. But uh, the thing with these guys is that I want to get a collabor collaboration done by them between um, George and Tony. So this oh, is Tony. Man, dude. So he's pretty versatile, black and gray, as well as uh, color realism. My goodness. And this is all Very healed work. Nice. Yeah. If the artist isn't going to post some healed work, then it's a little bit of a, uh, a red flag. So. Yeah, that's killer. So we're going to try and figure out something to go down my leg with these guys. And then, so this is Oh my Tony. God. Look at that. And so he's a really good is. person. So that's another yeah. big thing. I don't want to get tattooed by a douchebag ever again. Yeah. Yeah. No one ever wants to get tattooed by a douchebag. <sighs> But then you have just to just fun. get it blasted off like I did in Texas, right? Yeah, exactly. So this would be uh, George. He's from Brazil. Dude, very, very, tough. very patient. You have to be some... when you're doing stuff that tightly rendered. <laughs> yeah, look at that. So yeah, I actually know that about. statue. That's you do. That, um, the Poseidon statue right there is based off of a Bernini statue carved out of black marble. Wow. I saw that at the um, the Villa de Borghese in Rome, Italy. Wow, I would love to see that. It's small. It's tiny. It's like this, maybe, maybe really? 10, 12 inches tall. Isn't that I tried, crazy? I tried so hard to get a the best photos I could of it, but it's black marble. So it's got super bright reflective surfaces and the shadows next to the dark marble just completely make some of the forms disappear. It was one of the most tricky statues I've ever photographed. Very so. interesting. Yeah, George is yes, a great dude. Dear. Yes, what can I do for you? Stella. What is it? So where is this at? Where are you guys meeting up at in Philly? <clears throat> uh, yes, we're actually going to be meeting up twice in February. It's perfectly awesome. Um, we will be going to the Red Tree Live event happening on February 5th and 6th in Columbus, Ohio. Man, that's awesome. Yeah, Lauren, I'm taking you out for Cuban food your first night down there. Oh my God, I'm I'm already salivating. Yeah, Ricardo's been there. It's my favorite. It's my one of my favorite restaurants in the city. It's a pretty good place, man. It was fun, and it's it's uh it's a really neat environment too. I love I love developing favorites in different um areas. I've got a lot of favorites across um the country, like little places you would never expect. If we ever make it out to New York and the Bronx or anything, I have a few spots that you'd love. 
I haven't been out in New York forever. Jason, how's that, uh, how was that skull that you were doing? Did you end up getting back into that thing? Uh, yeah, I still have to go through and tweak some of the details. I'm going to add some of those little nuanced cast shadows. Mm -hmm. You know, just some of the little subtleties. Um, I still need to tweak the detail on that a little bit. I might bring it with me to Red Tree. Um, I know Gabe's got me working with uh, Bob for most of the day Saturday. Awesome. Um, but I'm going to try to go through and he's, he has me pretty much open all day on Sunday. So that's cool. So I might go through instead of um, tattooing on Sunday, I might actually just go through and uh, just work on a painting. Yeah, it's fun, dude. Because I don't have any clients out in Columbus, so. Just hang out and see what happens, right? Right? I think I know someone. She's got red hair, about 5'5". Five five. There you go. No, just kidding. I mean, if they're trying to get tattooed, have them reach out to me. I'll be happy to tattoo them. I'm talking about myself, Jason. <clears throat> Ew. I know. <laughs> okay, sorry. I guess you know. <laughs> Jason's like, oh, I know, I know. Yeah, five five. They're gonna tower over me like an Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do I start with blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, or strawberries first? Strawberries. Strawberries always go with the strawberry first, man. Come we on. Use those as the base, and then we'll build on top of that. And acrylics dry up so fast, dude. What, yeah, I was going to ask you the comparison of like tattoo inks being acrylic based versus not and, and how that relates and correlates to what you paint with. It's pretty interesting. And those same type of properties that you see are very apparent in acrylic based tattoo inks about drying up, flaking. Yes. Oh, yeah, the raw pigments, man, I'll lay them out. And I, I normally would just put down, you know, what inks I'm going to use at that moment change gloves, put down more ink and stuff like that with the old, the old acrylic stuff that I was using. But with the raw pigments, you can just lay them all out at one time and then you don't have to worry about them drying up or anything. Yeah. It's pretty incredible. Yeah, it's awesome. Cool, thanks. Yeah, man. I, love I think, I think more companies as time progresses into the future will start be will start using um, more of the water-based dispersions. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, you guys nailed it right away so kudos right now i am fighting myself on this painting because i keep going back and forth between just laying down chunky strokes and fighting the urge to blend it and i think what's happening is that some of the um, proportions are off on this mask so i think i need to go back in and drop this down just a little bit more here this angle here is a little off for my reference so I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. Because I think that's what I'm fighting is trying to figure out the shape of those highlights and I don't need to be doing that to myself. So just go in and do this the way it's supposed to be done. And the craziest part about this is that this mask won't stay. These these parts of the that I'm laying down right now aren't gonna stay this, this uh, color. I'm gonna go back in with some black and white on top of this. I was just going to ask you if you were planning on going through and adding and really pushing and pulling, or yep. if you were going to do that towards the end. Yeah, I'm going to do it towards the end. I'm going to do it towards the end. I find what works best for me in, in this process is to uh, establish all the shapes and make sure that my proportions are correct, find where I need to tweak it um, to adjust it, and then start messing with the details afterwards. After everything's sound and in its place where it needs to be, then I'll go through and start doing all that other stuff. So when you're when you're building those shapes, are you going by color as well? Or are you sticking more with like a neutralized tone in order to go through and just block in like, you know, basic forms, basic shapes and basic angles? Yeah. Or are you working with color at the same time? I'm doing neutralized tones. I like I like thinking of the darkest color of that, of that value in that area. So this one's gonna be more like a reddish orange and pink and stuff like that. Uh, and I'll go in with the darker, darkest valley that I can find 
without it being black and then shape it all out with that that value and then i'll go back in and start doing like the little adjustments here and there like you can see how contrasting this color is to this pink in both right. these areas here so it's really simple it's like two values and that's it um and i just try to break down the image that i'm looking at in the same capacity uh where it's just simple the simpler the better I'm starting to see a lot of problems here. Like this whole area right here just needs to go away. But this is the part of the fun part. You know what I mean? This is the part of the fun where some people will get mad and start tossing paintings out the window because I've been there myself. Um, this is part of the fun for me is discovering these, these uh, issues and, and trying to change them up, I'm trying to fix it up. I learned a lot in this way. I learned a lot in uh, learning how to pay a little bit more attention to plot points, such as the tips of these flowers to the socket of the eye, where that relates to the corner of the eyeball here, uh, and then how it pays attention to the curve where it drops from this point to this point on the flower and it almost comes straight across. Um, so I, I like to learn a lot about the process in that, in that way. So if I'm messing it up and stuff like that and along the way, it doesn't matter. Not anymore. It used to bother me so much that I was throw pain in here. I was like, that's not perfect. That's not perfect. Get rid of it. Don't even let anybody see that thing. Don't look Looks at like, it. Looks um, like Steph Bastian just made a post the other day um, about, you know, making a comment that, you know, if you're working on a painting, if you're working on, you know, a sketch or a drawing or something like that, it doesn't have to be perfect. No. It's those imperfections that make it art. Yeah. The eye of the beholder, right? Right. It's, are you conveying the message? Right. And what is it that you're even trying to say if you even know that, right? Right. Like I was talking, like I was talking last night about the, like the textual process and so like that, like having an intention when you first start, you know what I mean? Like that kind of resonated with me pretty hardcore especially given the fact that like I find textures are like one of my weaknesses, you know what I mean? That I need to start like uh, investigating a little bit more. And um, when he said it like that, I was like, oh, okay, that, that makes a little bit more sense, you know, like, but like, and it's not, it doesn't have to be that, that um, dramatic of a process either. Like it's just simply finding your fundamentals, you know? Right. Finding your, finding your fundamentals and, and, and utilizing them to your capacity um, and then learning about it in the process. Observation, my man. Observation and progress. I'm thinking a lot about that this no, week. I, I don't know about you, but I know that I generally tend to find that when I have a, a deeper motivation for working, for working on a painting, uh, you know, regardless of what that motivation is, yeah. I've found that when I have that kind of a motivation or that kind of a reasoning behind it, uh -huh. I tend to put in a, just a little bit more effort and it tends to force me to really go outside the box and to really kind of develop some bigger ideas. Right. I like that idea. Cause that's, that's exactly it. It's like, um, it's growth. Right. Um, and sometimes that word again, failure, which I don't think it really means like you didn't accomplish what you wanted to accomplish. I think it actually means like education and learning as long as you perceive it that way, right? Um, and I think it's true, Jason. I think that like we're talking about, you know, like the more we discover along the way, but have the right influence as far as like the, the, um, the foundations and, and, the, and uh, the fundamentals, you know what I mean? Like the, the, the better that process will be for us to educate ourselves. Now, whenever you're going through and all you're doing is relying on your frustration and you're allowing that to take over everything else. And that's when you stay stagnant. That's when you start beating yourself up because you've seen all these other people do the things that you want to do on Instagram or on Facebook or whatever it is. And they're accomplishing all these things that you think you perceive as them accomplishing stuff, but they could have, they could have the worst, the worst, um, observation of themselves entirely they never even know it. So for what's that for that what's that what, what that's worth. I'm sorry, I'm tongue tied today. I apologize. 
It's all good. Yeah, I think it's I, I think it's really important to understand that you don't have to have a deep significant meaning when you're working on a painting. You know, I do a lot of color studies, I do a lot of texture studies or studies with medium. Um, you know, just experimenting with okay, well, I'm going to cover this canvas panel with uh, plaster and then gesso over top of it. And I'm going to paint on top of that. And we're going to see how it turns out. Okay. Right? Yeah. You know, and I'll go through and I'll do a fully rendered painting on this canvas panel, just trying out, do I like painting on plaster that's been gessoed? Or, you know, do I prefer to paint on stretched canvas that's been gessoed? Mm -hmm. You know? Do I prefer to paint on linen or do I prefer to paint on cotton duck canvas? Do I prefer this brand of acrylics and oils or do I prefer this bit brand of acrylics and oils? You know, there's, you can find a small insignificant reason for everything, but those insignificant reasons are actually very significant for you developing your own style. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. I almost don't even want to eat this bowl of cereal. Why? Because it's beautiful. <laughs> Got that beautiful cereal going on. Huh? Dude, look, look at that. that. Look at that. There's cereal underneath that. What do you even have cereal underneath that? Wow, that is the beautiful. Why don't Couple you paint that? You should paint that, uh, Jason. Yeah, take a picture of it. Let's paint it. We'll call it the, the Tuesday Fields cereal. Let's see if I can. It's not the best lighting. I wish I had more controlled lighting. Hey, like we're just saying, let's discover it. Let's go. That's a thing too I like about having um like a studio local is that you can just uh I have all of my lights set up for like acute projects like that where it's you know the lights are just like if I need to photograph a bottle or something like that. Yeah. Before I used to have to break down and set up for every single thing like that. You know, I just had a lady come in yesterday with her daughter. Uh, I've been tattooing her daughter for a long time and she's always been kind of curious about the process. And she came in, we hung out, I tattooed her daughter while we, while we were talking and stuff like that. Uh, it turns out that she's a photographer and she helped me out with my camera quite a bit. So that was pretty, pretty resourceful. You know what I mean? And like, it was cool because she told me about like a, uh, like a certain kind of, uh, what is it, flash that you can get, like the ones that move up and down, you know what I mean? They kind of bevel, and you point it up towards the ceiling if you have a white ceiling and stuff like that, and it'll capture all that like white ambient light that's in the room and stuff. Dude, it's pretty cool. So I'm really looking forward to kind of just go, like putting out some photos with this new process that she took to show me. But from of all the places, you know what I mean? A, a girl that I've been tattooing for years, her mom comes in with her and she's like schooling me on, on my camera which is awesome because I would have never known if I would have asked you, what do you do? I didn't ask, what do you do? That's and the beauty of asking questions is that questions sometimes have like such a great answer that you just never expected. Um, yep. That's why it's always great to ask questions. You just don't know where they'll lead you. Exactly. We're just saying hello. What up, dude? Yeah, the questions are important. Do it. I remember how many, I don't know how many times I would like literally walk up to people and start to formulate this question in my head. And then I'd just turn around and walk all the other way. <laughs> all the time. All the time. It was terrible. It's terrible. But it got me here. So that's okay. So I didn't like the lips, the placement of the lips. I, I dropped the, uh, the mask down a little bit more like it's supposed to be as far as the angle here that's the lowest point and the curve point is along with the bridge of the nose this comes up to a little bit more of a taper but i'll do that with the highlights and then this angle not too bad but that needs to be right there so i just look at plot points i look at all these like fictitious kind of corners like right angles and I pay attention to the linear portion of it rather than like how, how the S curves. Once you start diving in a little bit more, you start magnifying in as far as your scope goes, 
then you can start paying attention to like how subtle like some of these little S curves are. Now with this mask, it's pretty simple as far as the shape of or the form of the face, because it's very, um, it's, it's very curved, but it's super soft and stuff like that. So there's not a whole lot of little deviations like that that you'd find in like hair, for example, or like you know lips or something like that. That's why I'm struggling with the lips as far as the placement of them and stuff like that too. Um, that's what I'm struggling with the most right now. But a lot of it have to do with the proportions. So I think I'm getting closer to how it works supposed to be. So we'll go in and start playing with those again. It's a discovery. It's a discovery process. And it's fun. I wouldn't trade it for anything. It can be frustrating, but that's some of the best part is practicing those, all this methods that I was talking about a lot of times, like just focusing, breathing, like Zach was talking about with the, uh, the breathing, controlling your, your emotions, your moods, your heart rate, et cetera, et cetera. Almost puts you in a meditative state. It can, can't it? When you're focusing on your breathing and controlling your heart rate while you're doing something very repetitive, yeah. 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 Is that a brush it. or a Q-tip? <laughs> this is a brush. It's a little, what is that? Like uh, I've never seen you use a brush that small. Yeah, sometimes I do it. Sometimes I'll mess around with it. Sometimes I fuck with that shit, you know, man? Sometimes I mess with well, it. Well, you don't know. Yeah, no, but it's fun. It's fun to play around with these sometimes. I was just talking about that before you hopped on. This is uh, pretty ironic because like, I was just saying, I try to go in with as big of a brush as I can right away. And uh, really block in everything. I love how um, abstract it can be sometimes too. I love the way in your paintings you have these very definitive brush strokes. Yeah. It's expressive. But at the same time, it still maintains a lot of the very refined uh, artistic qualities that you see in a lot of like the Renaissance paintings. You know what I'm saying? Kind of. What do you mean? Like as far as the lighting? Well, you, you have a lot of great rendering in it. You've got a lot of very great angles, which we all know the classic masters were always advocates about. Um, your color choices are out of this world. But your oh, expressive man. brush strokes are what I think I'm really drawn to personally, because you can really yeah. see the curve of that jawline. You know, you can see in the mask how that, how each side is moving just based on those brush strokes that you're doing. Thank you, man. Shit. Man, oh man. It's made my day. Thank you, Jason. Appreciate that observation, man. Thank well, you. Well, I mean, I wasn't trying to make your day. I was just pointing something out you know well, thanks dude um yeah i i love i love just sitting back at arm's length and letting the brush kind of uh choose the path that we go you know what i mean um paying attention to those simple shapes and everything like that is crucial when it comes down to the first few layers of your painting you know what i mean like you're trying to discover um, the light, the way the light and the shadows exist together, um, how they're harmonious with each other, and the different things that they do to the person's eye. Um, and because again, we go back to that fact, simple fact that it's, it's all about light and shadow. It's, there's no line work. It's all about convincing a person that you're, you're viewing what it is that you want them to see. Um, and then you just don't even worry about right away about like, um, you know, ambient occlusion and stuff like that right away. You just kind of, because that, that's what happens with us whenever we're looking at photo reference, especially as we, we keep thinking that we're painting an apple or we're painting this face and we're painting this mask, you know what I mean? But it, it's not, we're actually just painting simple little shapes together. And we've talked about that quite a bit, Jason, you know, like about that. One thing, yeah. one exercise I like to do now, um, mm -hmm. and I've done this once or twice so far, but I haven't really gotten super far into it. Um, and it's something that my professor did back when I was in college, when he was trying to get us out of that mindset of 
I'm painting a chair or I'm painting an apple or I'm painting a person, right? He went out one night and I don't know if he had it in his storeroom or whatever. He came back with this really crazy, just like swirled abstraction of paint on canvas. And he said, okay, everyone, this is our person. This is what we are painting today. Yeah. Right? Okay. I'm listening. This, this is what we are painting. And it, it was just an amorphous blob of different colors of paint. Right? Yeah. There was no person. There was nothing there. Right. It was just light, value, and color. Right. Like, focus on just that. That's it. You know what I mean? But Treat like, it right. like that painting and everything will work out. But, yes. and it was crazy because everyone painted that successfully. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So it, it really does stand to show that, you know, hey, if you just look at light, form, value, and shape, you'll be fine. Yep. Have you ever, like, turned some of your paintings or drawings upside down, too? Mm hmm you know? Like that's another good way to do it too. I, I do that quite a bit. Like um, sometimes here, eventually I'm going to turn it on its side. You know what I mean? So I can just focus on, is everything in the right, is everything in the right place? Like you, you start to unrecognize what it is that you're looking at. Like what we're saying is as a face, you know what I mean? You start to pay attention more to what's actually happening. Like what you're saying is what is, what are those shapes? What are they? How do they, how do they fit together? That's exactly it. That's what it does. It, it, that's like one of the first steps in um, drawing from the right side of the mind too, right side of the brain or whatever. I love that book too, by the way. Good one. I love the way that person's kind of puckering their lips. Thanks, man. I'm glad it looks puckered. Bravo. One of those Thanks, dude. Give her a little, give her a little piercing here, a little bray piercing. Dude, I haven't had my LeBray person in for years and the whole still there. Crazy. Uh, dude, I started working on my uh, my new oil palette. Mm -hmm. That's this genius idea that I had. Okay. I think you'll be impressed with it when it's done. Okay. Your oil palette. Like how you lay your paints out? Yep. Killer. Can't wait to see it. It's a vertical palette. I mean, technically you can put it anywhere at any at any angle, but I'm trying to get it set up so that it attaches right to an easel. Okay. So that that way you don't you no longer have to worry about you know looking down or looking over or looking you know in a different area to see the colors that you're mixing. Oh, yeah. Like not even down. That's killer, dude. I can't wait to you see You know, that. that way you can have like your painting here and your palette right next to it, maybe at like a slight angle, mm -hmm. you know, so you could still see both in your, in your direct field of vision so that as you're mixing, you can make sure that you get the direct tones. You know, it's... It's been tricky to get it together, but I think it's finally starting to come together. That's awesome, man. Yeah, because I know we had talked about it, and I have that little gray one, the, the clear piece of glass that I use off the side of the palette, but, or the, the painting, but even then I have to kind of glance, like, like right now I'm glancing over at the acrylics and then coming back at my photo reference, which is kind of far away, but... Yeah, that'd be killer to see that, man. That'd be a great way to utilize the space and utilize what you're doing. Maximize your potential. Mm -hmm. Maximizing that potential all day, every day. So yeah, though, lately I've just been using a, a pretty cheap glass like drawing desk. I've yeah. been using that as my glass palette and it works pretty well. Yeah. As long as you can scrape it off, that's all that matters, right? 
Like I, I, I realize every time I mess with acrylics, I go to uh, get back into the acrylic from the day before, and it's like, oh yeah, no, I can't. That's right. It's, it's all dry. Because I dried like after twenty minutes of having it set out on the on the canvas board. Hey Jason, I noticed that you uh, showed off your cat. Would you like to see my puppy? Yes. Yes. Okay. Oh! Hey, buddy. Poppers! Oh my yes. God. What's the dog's name? I named him Lucky. Nice. Yeah. So he um he's just a little cuddle bug. I bring him into the office occasionally and he'll just, you know, chill. So this is Lucky. He's the newest member of my little family. Aww. And I love him. He's, he's great. That's fantastic. I can never be around him. Yeah, I will take him home with me. <laughs> yeah, I've uh, I've really enjoyed having him so far. He's been perfectly well behaved. He's still really young, but very very quick to learn. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. And the only reason why I was showing off my cat is because she's a bit of an attention whore. <laughs> oh man, yeah. Like if if she is not the center of my world, hey. She starts oh, to then, act up. Yeah. And she's really nice with some people, but she doesn't like me at all. Dude. She doesn't like oh. most people. I was like, what There's did I do to you? There's only three people she actually gets along with. Yeah, who's that? Me? You. Yeah, you. Uh -huh. The girl, Katie, that comes over and watches him whenever I go out of town. Okay. Or watches her whenever I go out of town. Um... And her original owner, a girl named Casey. Those are the only three people in the world that she is actually like civil with. She hides from most people. Most people never even see her. So some yeah. people think I'm lying. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. Um, those that seek her out and try to pet her usually get clawed or bit. But they get warned. So, but yeah, she's just not a very social cat. That's a, how old was she whenever cat. you got her? How old were, was she? How old was she whenever you? Uh, so you when really I got, got her, it? she was one and a half, okay. one and a half or two. I think she was two. Hmm. Um, and I adopted her from a friend of mine that was going through a really bad breakup and she couldn't see the cat anymore. Um, oh, and it was like her emotional support animal at the time. So okay. I was like, listen, I'll go through, I'll take, I'll take Stella, I'll watch her for a little bit while you and your ex get some stuff figured out. And I knew the day she dropped her off, she was never getting her back. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's right. I remember talking to you about that because I watched my ex's dog. I would have fought to the death. I would have made a square of branches and fought whoever for that cat. That's hilarious, dude. That is hilarious. You know, because I've actually thought, I'm not lie to you, there's been a couple of times where I'm like, man, maybe I need a cat. But if I get a cat, I can't get like a little kitten. You know what I mean? Like I need a, like a cat that's already been kind of seasoned. Not that I'm going to eat it or anything like that, but you know what I mean. I was I just going to ask you, what kind of seasoning were you thinking? Were you thinking Creole seasoning? Were you Probably thinking a little bit kind of, of Thai seasoning? Maybe throw some Thai basil in with it? Give it a little spice? Yeah, some Thai basil would probably be the best bet. Yeah, that'd probably be the best bet, I think, the Thai basil. I just had some Thai again from the other day. Man, I missed it. I forgot how good that stuff is. My favorite yeah, restaurant, though, if they won't... They won't open back up. Like they, since this whole COVID thing, the restaurant has been closed the, the whole time. You know, like the restaurant portion of it. You can go in and order and stuff like that, but it's just not the same. I mean, it tastes great still, but like, man, you want to go in there and hang out. You know what I mean? Talk to them. Yeah, people don't just want good food. They want good environment. They want the ambiance. They want you know the the experience. Exactly. I miss it. They were so cool there too, man. They're still so awesome. <laughs> just 
they usually know your order. You know what I mean? Oh, Ricky, let's give you your order. It's pretty fucking funny. Pretty fucking funny. And this this acrylic is drying super super fast. I don't know if it's like this normally or what. It feels like it's drying even quicker than I'm used to. You're just so used to oils that acrylic just dries instantly now. I think you might be right, man. It's crazy. Um, it definitely dries a lot faster than oils. But we're good. I think we're finally getting some more of the lips. I think I'm finally getting to the point where I'm like just enjoying them. The space still seems a little wide here, though. Hmm. Yeah, just a little white, maybe. It's always fun whenever you get to paint like this, you know what I mean? Like last night, um, sitting down with, with uh, Renee and her apprentice and like Kyle showed up on, on Zoom and stuff like that. It's always kind of fun. Jason, I know we've talked about that, man, but we got to get that going sometime soon because I would love to sit down and paint. So hey, I'm down to host up. I'm down to host the paint jam. Okay. When you want to do, just let me know when you want to do it and we'll, we'll get it going and we'll put a post or something there and do it. Yeah. I mean, I could even see it on like a Saturday night or, you know, if no one else has anything to do. Yeah, man. We'll do a couple hour paint jam and invite a whole bunch of people. Yeah. Because I know Atomic had been, he messaged me on in, uh, in Instagram asking about it. So it'll be fun to get that going. And we got to get going on uh, Ruben's piece, too. Yes, we do. We got to get that thing finished up. Yeah, I know, man. Talk about it. It's going to be fun. We still have a, a couple of different tones to throw into it as far as the orange background goes. Um, I've got a bit more work to do on that skull. Yeah. Uh, I'd love to get back in the face, too. Um, have, you, have you seen anything healed from it? Has he sent you anything? Nope. Okay. Maybe we'll ask him today. Jason and I, one of the first things we did together, like when I first met him, was plan out a big back piece. Do you remember that? Yeah. Like one of the first things we did together was, was plan out a big back piece. And it's before I even met you in person, we had this this uh, plan to just attack this kid's back. And it was so cool how he just let us kind of go for it. Let us do whatever we wanted. And he loved Huge it. cover up too. Huge cover up, like two big cover ups on his back. Yeah, I was like, yeah, it's two big cover ups, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so that was a fun process. And then like, it was just so exciting to meet you in person. And that was the first thing we did. Like, you know what I mean? Just sit down and talk about it. And I think as I was waiting in the parking lot, I was like refining some of the line work on my end. <laughs> yeah. I'm waiting at the airport and then like refining it on my iPad. I was like, oh shit, oh shit. I'm gonna let this It's like, down. this is really going on. Yeah, is it really happening? It was cool. There we go, it's a little bit better. Just gonna work on this whole area right here. Well, I do have to get going in just a few minutes, guys. Just wanted to cool. pop in and say hi. Hello, hello. Thanks for joining us, Jason. You're very welcome. What time is it? I have 11.15. Okay, cool. I think I'm going to have to get going in a little bit too. But why don't you go ahead and sign off? Cool. Hey, everyone. Uh, thanks for letting me jump in today. My name is Jason Leeser. You can find me on Sundays at the live drawing group here at Reinventing the Tattoo on Sunday afternoons at 1 p.m. Eastern. Um, or you can reach out to me on Instagram at Philly Inc. Um, for any questions, ideas, or comments, or any, if you just want to chat, I'm a pretty cool dude, I think. Can talk about That's anything. Really, really cool. Out. Yeah. Yeah. Cool, man. Thanks for joining cool. us, dude. You're Come very welcome. Jason? What's up? I just said thank you, Jason. Oh, You're very okay. welcome. All right, guys, take care, and I will catch you next week. Hasta luego. See you soon. Hasta luego. Cool. I think I might be jumping off here pretty soon, too, Lauren. I got to get ready for this appointment. It's going to be coming yep. in pretty soon.
Okay. But um, yeah, so you guys get to see a little bit of the process today. You get to see me fumble through some of the mistakes that I realized that I had on my proportions and stuff like that. So it's always fun whenever you get to see some of that process, like some of the struggle and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like um, that class that I was in, Joseph Todorovich, T-O-D-O-R-V-I-T-C-H, I think is how you spell his last name. Um, I did it last January. I did one of my first uh, portrait oil paintings. Um, I'll show it to you guys here in a second. Uh, and it was fun. But the thing that I realized is like, even he was having some issues, like as far as relating some of the shapes and stuff like that together. You know what I mean? But this guy is an amazing artist. Um, it made me feel pretty comfortable about like what it was that I was getting ready to do. And then it made me feel a little bit better whenever I fumbled through it too, just like today. You know what I mean? But we keep working at it. We keep working at it. And that's why I always relate it back to like our life. You know what I mean? Like we, we have to um, realize that it's kind of the same. It's kind of similar as far as like how we perceive it, how we project it, the things that we say become our life, the things that we do become our life. So if we're constantly struggling, telling yourself you're not good enough to finish a painting, what's the difference between that and like you walking around every day, you know? So if you guys get a chance, check his stuff out. Let me go, sh let me show you some of this stuff real quick. There's one that I did. So that's the first oil painting I ever did. There's some proportions wrong with like the arms and stuff, you know, but um, there you go. That was a lot of fun. That was, I think a four week or five week process. Every Friday night, we worked on it for about five hours a piece. And then the time off throughout the week that we did it, it's kind of like guys class where you have a subject, work on it throughout the week and stuff like that and then report back in that following week. Um, I had a lot of fun doing it, learned a lot a lot of things about oils and um it was pretty fun but yeah um my name is ricardo certivant thank you guys for joining us again for tuesday feelings uh Lawrence, thank you so much again for all your help i can't be here without you like you're amazing so thank you Good so much together ricardo yeah for sure man but um thank you so much and uh thank you gabe thank you sandy kyle you put in a lot of work man thank you so much thank you all the horsemen all of you guys watching uh, and the man himself, Guy Hitchison, I can't be more appreciative. So um, you guys have a good day and I'll talk to you next week.